We previously talked about the topic of exceptions when we were working with standard input and we talked about the fact how if you call readint and the user types in something that's not an int then you will get a number format exception. That also happens if you call to int or to double on things that aren't of the appropriate type. It turns out that files can have quite a few of their own exceptions and so it's worth revisiting the what goes on here and to talk about how this should be dealt with in the case of files. So the first type of exception that we can get with a file, let's look in the directory that we have here, and we'll run Scala. We'll import scala.io.source, and then I am going to call, let's make a source, and call file aaa.txt which, as you can see, is not one of the files that we have. And this gives us a new type of exception, a file not found exception. Very self-explanatory. Uh, so that's one of the things that can go wrong when you try to create a, or to open a file. Now for the scripts that we're writing, we're often not going to worry about this, but if the file name came from a user in one way or another, we would actually need to deal with this because we would need to be able to tell the user that they gave us an invalid file name and as opposed to having the entire program crash. So if we wanted to do that, if our file name did come from a user, we would have a try and then we would open our file And then we would do other stuff here with the source. So I might have val, actually I can maybe print line source.mk string, which is a handy way to turn the entire file into a long string. And then I could catch a case for ex of a file not found exception, print line that file doesn't exist. Error not found type, file not found exception, oh, because it is in java.io, which is not imported by default. So let's repeat our commands, but I'm going to not put in an import, I'm going to use the long name for it. I am just going to type in java.io dot file not found exception and then close it up. And of course it says that file doesn't exist because well, it doesn't. Note that I put the code that used the source inside of here. It might be tempting to have it so that the source was inside of the try where I make this and then use it down below. But as a general rule, that's not going to work because remember variables have scope and so the scope of this variable is from the open curly brace here to the close curly brace here so once you leave the try block you can't use this source even if it succeeded in opening you no longer have access to it and so that has to happen inside of here it happens though that just doing stuff with the file can cause exceptions uh, if you try to process parts of the file that aren't there, or maybe you get things like number format exception because you were trying to do something with the file, you thought it was going to be an int or a double, and it wound up not being that format, it might throw an exception. In that case, if you want your code to be robust, we would put another try catch inside of, of here so that we could deal with that uh, particular error and we would another thing that you want to include at times is another phrase that we haven't worked with called finally and the idea of finally and it would go in this example inside of these curly braces we would have a try and a catch the finally is something that's going to happen no matter what so whether there is an exception or not the finally always happens before the code 
leaves. And the reason we'd want to finally block is because we need to close this source. Okay, so, so we would wind up, let's go back to our uh, readnums.scala. We had a source here. Previously, we did not deal with the exception. And I'm going to go ahead and import java.io and I'll import everything from java.io catch the exception that we expect might happen here is a file not found exception in which case for this code we'll just print line the file wasn't found and then I can close my catch Everything after I've opened this is stuff that could potentially go wrong because I care about indentation. I am absolutely forced to indent those things inside of the curly braces. So to deal with the possibility that something might go wrong here, I'd probably create another try around the stuff that I'm going to do. So for example, I am calling to int here. Well, maybe that the things inside of here weren't ints. Maybe you know, in this case, because I'm using the stuff built into the collection, I don't have a problem with the trying to read more than is actually there. But if we had been reading this in a different way, if we had been calling next on our own, we might have somehow overrun our, our iterator and we could have had a different type of exception. So I might want to have a case for a number format exception the and we'll print line the file contained a non number something that would be useful for people to know and then I will have the finally here and as I said the reason for the finally is because it is going to happen no matter what Okay, so if any of these lines throw an exception, well, if they throw a number format exception, it's going to come here. If they throw some other type of exception, that could exit this completely because I don't have cases for handling it. But even if it's some other, form, if some other type of exception, something we didn't expect, this finally is going to execute. So we will be certain to close the source whether or not there is, uh, there is an exception. And that's significant because you might be tempted, oh, well, I'll just put the source.close down here at the end. I don't need a finally block. But if this code threw some exception that we didn't handle, then the whole thing would exit without closing the file. So that's a nice overview of dealing with files and exceptions. Hopefully it helps you to review the use of try catch. Once again, they're only for kind of exceptional cases. They are things you want to use when there are errors, not for just dealing with kind of standard things that might happen in your program.